Hey everybody, this is Rose of Sharon and I'm back again with another book review. I just read the fifth book in the Johnny Dixon series. It's called Eyes of the Car Killer Robot. I almost turned Japanese there, excuse me. And like I said, the Johnny Dixon books, this, this one, the fifth one, Killer Robot, it was particularly hard for me to actually um, obtain. <laughs> this one is about a couple of necromancers that build a robot. It's supposed to be one that's just, it's a baseball robot, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. And since this takes place close to Fenway Park, you've got the Red Sox and the Yankees. And of course, me, I'm a Red Sox fan, so yay, Red Sox. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like the Yankees. Excuse me. I, I, I mean, I love Babe Ruth, but I can't stand the Yankees. Please forgive me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, this is a really good book. It's excellently written. It's uh, very reminiscent to House with a Clock on Its Walls, just because you've got a couple, a necromancer couple, and instead of bringing about doomsday or resetting the world in their image which the first book the house of the clock and its walls is absolutely petrifying you think oh my lord mr izzard you are all kinds of brambled in the head but yeah mr sloan is a bit attached himself so he's a uh, everest sloan he and his wife or amelia are the ones that created this robot and it was meant to be their servant and of course there's a just absolutely ghastly scene here when Johnny thinks he hears they took my eyes from out of nowhere there's this disembodied voice I thought oh god I mean because you know in my mind I can see these things and I love horror don't get me wrong um, this is more suspense and surreal and supernatural and for a kid's book Mr. Belair really knows how to make you feel rather edgy, and he spares no detail here. He he spares no expense to to scare the crap out of you, and <laughs> yeah, this this is one of those that actually does. And um, he speaks of Cagliostro. Actually, um, I'm gonna do because I've done this before, but I really don't. Give me a second. Uh, all right. I'm going to do a quick search here. Now. Okay. Yostra. Count of Cagliostro. Okay. The Count of Cagliostro. He was the occultist, Giuseppe Balsamo. He was born in Palermo. Let's see. What about Alessandro? I know a little bit. It's been a while since I've looked into Alessandro. Let's see. Not to be confused with Cogliostro. Yeah, of course. Or the film, whether, whether it would be 29 or my favorite, which um, stars Lupin. Um, let's see. He is usually referred to in the French as Joseph Balsamo. He was an adventurer and a self-styled magician. Of course, I know this because I love magicians. I remember. He became a glamorous figure associated with the royal courts of Europe where he pursued various occult arts, including psychic healing, alchemy, and scrying. Yeah, no wonder I like the guy. I like alchemy too. His reputation, of course, I don't do anything. I don't really delve into that whatsoever just because I don't want to. <laughs> I know better. I don't mess with things I don't understand. His reputation lingered for many deca decades after his death and continued to deteriorate as he became to be regarded as a, char a charlatan and imposter. Yeah, true. He, his view was fortified by the savage attack of Thomas Carlyle, who pronounced him as the quack of quacks. Later works that of W. R. H. Trowbridge in his Cagliostro, Splendor of Misery and Mag Master of Magic, attempted a rehabilitation. Um, yes, he shrouded in mystery, propaganda, and mysticism. Some effort was ascertained 
was made to ascertain his true identity, he was arrested because of, of uh, the possible participation in the affair of a diamond necklace. Yeah, true. True, true, true. He had been, huh, interested in the Kabbalah, apparently. Hmm. Um, yeah, he learned a lot of spiritual rites. Uh, he traveled quite extensively. Affair of the Diamond Necklace. Yeah, this is what I, look, was, what I was looking for. Cagliostro was prosecuted in the Affair of the Diamond Necklace, which involved Marie Antoinette. Oh, yeah, now I recall. The Prince Louis de Rohan and was held in Bastille for nine months, finally acquitted, when no evidence could be found connecting him to the affair. Nonetheless, he was banished from France by Louis the Fifteenth. Actually, no, yeah, wait, Louis the Louis the Sixteenth. Excuse me, departed for England. There, he was accused by the French expatriate. Uh, Thenevno de Morand of being Giuseppe Balsamo, which he denied. <laughs> he uh, it forced a retraction of apology from Morand. Okay, he was betrayed. Oh, I remember. This is just so messed up. He left England to visit Rome, where he met two people that proved to be spies of the Inquisition. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. Forgive me for that little dark humor. Some accounts hold that his wife was the one who initially betrayed him. In December 27th, 1789, she was in prison and sent to Castel San, G San Angelo. He was tried and originally sentenced to death. But sentence later continued. He was commuted to life imprisonment at the Fort de San Leo, where he would die. Mm. Very interesting. There's quite a bit. Alexander Dumas. Yeah, I wonder if it's. <laughs> He's mentioned in Kid Eternity, Phantom comic. Yeah, it's no wonder. He's mentioned quite a bit. Uh, he's a. Uh, it's not a uh, Cogliostro is actually a you know version of Todd McFarlane's Spawn, introduced by Neil Gaiman. Interesting, fascinating. He appears in many different types of music. I'm surprised that he's not even mentioned. They need to expound upon this because he's actually mentioned in. Um, Johnny Dixon quite a bit because Johnny finds him fascinating and understandably so. So I find him also very intriguing. Um, but beyond that, I know I got off track, but there he's only mentioned just, he's mentioned in passing, so that's why I thought I would do a little bit digging because I didn't remember everything about Alessandro. Um, I really don't know what else to say about the book itself, although it's very frightening. I don't recommend it for anybody under the age of seven. Well, it might even frighten a seven-year-old, but in this day and age, I don't think there's much that can actually f scare a kid because kids are pretty resilient. Um, I, I, this is coming from somebody who, as a child, watched The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth and all those of dark fantasies, and I grew up with actual... Uh, Grimm's fairy. I grew up with Grimm's version of the fairy tales as a as a child. They th my parents did sugarcoat. And that was one thing that they allowed for me. If I had a question, they would answer it, and I wasn't um, I wasn't restrained. If if I had an quiz, I already have an inquisitive nature, so I want to know everything. Um, but there really isn't that much to say about Eyes the Kill Robot, other than. Just like every subsequent Bel Air's book, it just becomes darker and darker and darker. And this one has that sense of foreboding and, of course, the whole... The fear that we all have is the fear of somebody watching us or the fear of somebody chasing us and for intentions of harm or worse, which in this case, death. Um, yeah. <laughs> And I know I had some spoilers that I should have mentioned before, but I don't think they're too bad. I don't think that it really reveals too much plot as far as 
Johnny and his fr friends, circuiters like like Fergie and Grandma and Children Mouse. Um, of course, Sloan and his wife, their intentions are revealed, and they're just cuckoo for coconuts and cocoa bananas. But I uh, really don't have that much to say about Killer Robot other than it's woefully short. I was I finished this in a day waiting for my friend who was doing work at the time, so I just since I love Belair so much I just I had to read and uh, it's just so interesting that Belair's was actually compelled by Cagliostro to put him in there just as a kind of oh we're gonna put this magician in there <clears throat> so called I should say so called because unlike um, Flamel Flamel was a honest to goodness alchemist and I'm kind of wondering I don't, he's the only one that comes to my mind though, just because I'm more familiarized with, with him and uh, just the enigma surrounding his body and all that. But um, that's about all I have to say. It's, it's really quite well written. It's, it's terrifying and it's fantastic and just it's a romp that is so enjoyable and you just feel such a sense of relief at the end with Children Mass being as his old self. It's, it's kind of like, I'm wondering, I don't know if the creators of Gravity Falls are, are familiar with this sort of thing, but just reading this and um, knowing the basis of Grunkle Stan, I think, Children Mass really is, is actually not uh, children, um, Stan, but Stan's brother. It actually reminds me more of Stan's brother even though um, Stan's brother doesn't come across as a, a man who is this um, <laughs> vitriolic old coot. But he means well. I mean, he has a good heart. He's, he's a caring, um, magnanimous man who, um, like, it, this is all the other books. He's, uh, Johnny's an orphan. So he accepts him into his home. Um... I really don't have that much else to say, honestly. It's just, it's wonderful. It's just absolutely fantastic. And it's um, s stellar, completely astronomically written. If you're a fan, this is the fifth book in the series. And, of course, this is the original. I got the Bantam book, which it's a little beaten up, but I think it's in really good condition. I got it off um, Amazon because, as I stated before, the Dixon books, I got the whole series of the Dixon books, and some of them are co-authored because I think Bel Airs was starting to fail in health. He's no longer with us. I wonder when he died. I'm not sure, but I think he was in failing health. But, um, yeah, they've been talking about doing um, The Letter of the Witch in the Ring, which I think will be interesting because... I loved House of the Clock on Its Walls. It's one of my favorite films of all time, despite the whole demonic thing that, yeah. I get uh, kind of edgy when demons are involved just because I've been involved with one. But I'm not scared because I know who's on my side. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> been there, done that, got the t-shirt. They don't scare me, but never again. <laughs> I'd rather deal with a, a demon than I would a poltergeist. I mean, they're they're easier, but poltergeists will follow you. Demons aren't like that. It's a little bit different. But anyways, uh, I'm going off into paranormal land, which I usually don't do, but it's that time of year, so I feel more comfortable in talking about it, and I've actually experienced it, so I know of why I speak. Um, that's about all I have to say. So, till next time, live long prosper. Do -do -do.